Welcome to Forza's most bonkers race yet. Yes, we are at Miami Speedway Oval in the GT3 series. For this race, I've decided to go with the Aston Martin. Making a quite early rookie mistake here though. As you can see, the car looks perfectly fine, but there's a few key elements I forgot to change. We're starting off on hard tyres, pulling away, everybody else is getting a bit of a better start than I am. As you start to understand, everybody's overtaking me. I am struggling to set pace. Yep, I am running maximum front and rear downforce for no reason that I totally forgot to turn it off. Ah, uh, yeah. So, we are at a massive disadvantage here. We're not as bad as position 18, who is one second away and getting further away. There is a bit of carnage up in front, but I'm topping out at 166 miles per hour. I'm not even in top gear here, I'm in fifth. Like, you know, I didn't even change the ratios, nothing. I just hopped in willy-nilly like a complete buffoon and thought I would actually be competitive in this race. Oh, well, another car's gone off. That is a position gained. This race, although a very wide track, does create a lot of scenarios as in that. Thankfully, the Ferrari behind gives me a little nudge tap, realizes there's no help in me, and overtakes as well. Uh, the thought that counts, I guess. <laughs> I took up behind the Ferrari, trying to get a bit of slipstream. I gained one mile per hour that. Yeah, things are not going to go well. I mean, I'm keeping up with the rear end of the pack, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to end up in a good position. Going further down the line though, we do have a little ace up our sleeve, tyre wear. Now the Aston is extremely good at conserving its tyres. Even on maximum downforce, the tyres last a very long time and credit where credit's due on Aston, they've got it down to a T on here. It's a very good car for that and then once the tyres are worn, because I've got such a large amount of downforce, I may be able to keep pushing it for a few more laps. As you can see, we're starting lap 24 now and the tyres are starting to get quite worn. We have gained a few positions and everybody around us has already been through the pits. So my idea is if I can make these tyres last until about lap 30, then we might actually be in for a chance because the pitting should take about 30 seconds-ish and that might compensate for the time I'm constantly losing. I mean, we're at lap 30 now. The right-hand tyres are on moderate wear. The front left-hand tyre is on minor wear and we're still taking these corners like we haven't got any tyre wear. Uh, so we can't really grumble. I mean, we've also gained another position. We're in position 9 now. I mean, at least we're in the top 10. I <laughs> can't really grumble at like that. But I do plan on entering the pits relatively soon. Turning in now, totally missing it and going back out. <laughs> yeah, I expected a little bit more steering. Okay, we could do it on the next lap. And thankfully, we didn't even get a penalty for that. So <laughs> that's a lesson learned there. If you've also made that kind of mistake I just have, hit that like button and let me know down below. Coming towards the latter part of the race, we are now down in position 11. We again, as you see, only pitted once. There's a car in front of me that's pitted three times. And originally everybody else has pitted twice. Thankfully though, position one has just gone over the finish line. And we actually have more than a two minute race end timer. So we are going to be able to complete this race and not have a DNF. Which is brilliant news. I can't really go about that because that was the next thing I was thinking about. Was if I'm over two minutes uh, away from the car in position one. I'm going to end up with a DNF. Thankfully, that is not the case in this scenario or in this race. Either way, we're going to have to go back to the drawing boards, tune this car up and see if we can make it far better than what it is right now. Because at right now, it's as competitive as a slice of toast. But before we butter the toast, why not hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already? We changed cars. Um, I couldn't get the Aston Martin really much faster than 31 and a half seconds and uh, I need to have an average lap time of at least within 30 seconds if you work it out one second a lap 58 laps I'm gonna be 58 seconds slower than position one and that's just too much and I can't uh, bear with it thing is though 
I did spend a bit of time tuning this car and getting it a little bit better than what it was stock version but as you can see the weather is not on my side yep the next race was raining as as you can clearly see so we're all on wet tires and everybody is just really battling to gain that one position ahead and things come together more often than not. I mean, the cars on the left hand side is getting very close and we're sticking side by side. Now, the Lexus is a bit of a funky character. It can be a little bit twitchy, but it's a very, very fast car. Thankfully, oh, uh, whoa. Um, the ghost system is far better than what it used to be. But as you can see, I'm about to be part of a sandwich. Thankfully, the Lexus behind backed out, but I do have the car very close to my left hand side. Another thing I would like to point out, if I had a different tyre strategy, um, I'm already at a disadvantage because we're all going to be on wet tyres. So everybody is on the same tyre compound. So I can't use tyre strategy to my advantage. And even if I could, the Lexus is not the best at saving tyres. Um, nowhere near what the Aston Martin can do. We get a bit close to the Ferrari. I don't think contact was made, and I think I clipped the wall. But um, it's nice for them to say sorry. Incidents happen, and it certainly wasn't intentional. It was just close racing. And uh, like I said, Lexus does sw uh, suffer from a bit of aero wash at times. It's all right when it's behind someone, but when someone's behind you, it can be a bit twitchy at the rear end. And I thought Forza fixed that bug, but hey-ho. Another Lexus gone into the wall. Going to make a move there now and overtake the red ferrari as well ferraris are also a very competitive car in this race don't see many of those mercedes up in front so i'm not too sure if they're that competitive or not hey up hey come on just drives through me like i'm not even there thanks to ferrari and to see what i mean about the racing everybody is battling for that one position and things like that happen Although there was no need for what that Ferrari driver did and literally just drive right through me like I'm not even there. Hopefully they got a penalty for that so if the system is working as it should. I have to be honest though the race didn't really get any better. Flash carting up in front is 40 seconds away. And they've only managed to get away with pitting once which is, I think is incredible. So I'm not too sure what car they are running but being able to get away with pitting once and all of us having to pit twice is a huge time saver for them. I mean, that's 30 seconds if you look at it alone already. So credit where credit's due, well done. The tires must be cooked right now because we're coming around here. Lap 57, about to start our last lap 58 and our tires are already about to show their age. So yeah, credit where credit's due for that player. <laughs> well done, well done. Right. Back to the drawing board, I'm going to tune this car again a little bit more and try and get a bit more out of it. The next race doesn't start for another three hours and I reckon I can squeeze a bit more time out of this car and I'll finish in a far better position. But before we get there, I'd just like to take a moment out to thank our channel members which are Andy Good, Jeffrey Anderson, DMC Motorsport, Sigmatic, Daniel Adams, John Burns and AK47. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Let's get into that next race where the track is nice and sunny. I'm starting in position 13 because again, I don't qualify. I think we're on to a winner here. I spent a good two hours lapping this car and I managed to get on hard tires a consistent lap time of 30 seconds point two. The car is a bit funky though. It can twitch and can slide at times and it is quite difficult to control. You've got to be very gentle on the steering. But to have a lap time like that on hard tyres where most of the other racing drivers best lap times were about 29 and a half seconds. Uh, whether that includes slipstream or not or whether on medium or soft tyres, I'm not too sure. Still having that lap time on hard, which really puts me in a competitive position. Going off the bank a little bit and getting tangled up in a few cars around me, things go a little bit funky and we use the wall to try and straighten this car out. You can see everything still is quite competitive. Everybody does like to touch the car a lot. Way up. Thankfully they didn't come out of ghost as, as I thought they would. We do have a problem with this race though. There does have a poor network situation 
So you will see that pop up now and again, as well as a lot of sketchiness of a few cars here and there. You see about the back end stepping out there, that's what I mean about how the back end of this car can be a little bit funky. Like I say, I've really gone into the tuning side of this car and really done the best I can personally do with it. Not the fastest tuner in the world or the best tuner in the world, but it's something that can get me by and I learnt a lot today. Now, we are setting a lap time of 31.534. Thankfully, that was an incident lap. So hopefully this one might actually be perfect and clean. So it's going to be great to see what kind of lap time we have. Sigmatic is 0 0.8 seconds away. We are clawing them back in quite quickly. And position one is only 2.6 seconds away. So if we really keep our heat on, we might actually be able to gain that position. Port Network has come back up at the top of the screen. Uh, hopefully it's not going to affect us too much. Chop seven, se well, 1736 up in front is in the Acura NSX. That does seem to be quite a competitive car. It's better in the corners than the Lexus, but the Lexus does have the legs to keep pushing on, as you can see as I overtake now. Coming around this corner, the chop goes into the back of me for no apparent reason. I guess there wasn't enough room on the track. And Sigmatic and Chop take that position away from me. Yeah, it becomes a theme of this race. Chop is a bumpy driver. Again, it could be a network related issue. Sigmatic up in front and XC Devon that you may see in this race as well. They was in a party chat together and we was all three of us in this race together. Now, discussion at the end of the race says that uh, a lot of contact from cars on their screen was totally different to what happened on my screen and totally different happened on Sigmatic screen. So take over a grain of salt instances that take place when you have poor network because sometimes it might seem that the person's rammed you or sm smashed you off the track or anything like that. But on their screen, they, gave, they passed you cleanly. Like, you know, it's, it's really funky. And I don't understand why Forza has put us in this lobby Wherever it is, it isn't close by, <laughs> you know. Never mind, with that out of the way, we are having a great competitive race with Chop and Ross 1617 beside right now. Except for Chop massively gains a speed advantage and goes into the back of me again. <laughs> It'd be quite convenient if they gave me the speed boost, not just shoved me out of the way. It is what it is. They do have a 0 0.5 a second penalty. So I presume that the game does not believe either a contact was made or was intentional, whatever. It is what it is. Although it is tempting to retaliate, it's just best not to. It's just, what's the point? Just beat him in the race. <laughs> you see Devon up in front is 3.2. Jamie McKinley up in front is 3.2 seconds away. So we lost a little bit of time on a little bit of funkiness that's happening on the previous few laps. But we are in a great position, guys. We're in position five. This is the furthest up the pack we've ever been without crashing. Um, <laughs> coming over to the right-hand side, giving Chopper a little bit of space. Lee loves you behind, has a 5.5 second penalty. That is quite high, so there's obviously contact has been made somewhere. And the penalty system blamed that person, whether it's right or wrong. But that is a thing you must bear in mind. That's where there is a penalty like that. So you got to think, you get that niggly thing in the back of your head going, it might be intentional. So it's better to try and keep away from that player. Chop behind has a 1.3 second penalty now. So I'm not too sure how they managed that. Unless the game gave him a contact penalty, but a very small one. I'm not too sure. But again, contact has been made as I touch my rear end. But... Thankfully, on the straights, this car really pulls away. And you can see now how much more speed I am carrying from the previous two races. The previous race in the Aston, my top, I was topping out at, what, 166? Uh, less than that. Uh, in the rain, well, you can understand in the rain, there's, there's not much you can do, it's raining. But right now, we're hitting these banking corners at 170 miles per hour. Don't get a penalty for equipping that car, thankfully. Yes, brilliant news. Anyway, so we're hitting the banking corners about 170 miles per hour. Coasting it round those corners about 166. I would like it to be a little bit faster. 
but we're coming out on the straights at 180 miles per hour which is brilliant news lazy old woman does make contact to the side of this car and lee loves you has caught up as well i wonder if they are on medium tires because they do seem very quick in the straight as well as cornering that ferrari is a good choice to pick as a car if you would like to do this oval racing it does seem very competitive skipping ahead we're now in position three lazy old woman's position one sigmatic is position two a few people are going into the pits and our tires are not doing their best hopefully that got, yeah they could do ghost just checking <laughs> last thing you want to do is drive through someone when they're not actually ghosted <laughs> bit like the ferrari earlier but um i wasn't ghosted then well thankfully that car was ghosted anyway my rear tires are already on minor wear and we're only at lap 21 come on behave yourself car that's it straighten up thank you which only means one thing i'm gonna to have to pit far earlier than i intentionally wanted to goes to show the lexus does eat tires but then again i am going a lot faster and i have a lot of different setup and it might be eating the tires more than what it did in the aston so with that in mind cars behind me are in the pits i'm in position two lazy old woman is the time away is quite weird we clip the wall and do an absolute spin right now is the time to go into the pits because clearly this car can't handle minor tire wear on one of the tires hopefully though we haven't lost too much time from the position of other cars and we can make it back on the track chop is passing us now it would be a great indication to see how far ahead they're going to be to how much time we've lost. I'm going to say we've lost a good four or five seconds from spinning. Ah, absolutely painful. Right, we're going to have to bring that back. But thankfully this car is far more stable than it previously was. And that means I can actually take the corners faster. So we are keeping an average speed of 170 miles per hour through the banking, which is a great, great thing to have. Wow. Chopper's gained a four and a half second penalty in total up to now. Wonder what that is all about. Lazy old woman is 40 seconds ahead of us. They have not pitted yet. So there's going to be come to a point where they're going to have to pit. I wonder if that Ferrari is better on tires. They may also be trying to do a one stop strategy. I'm not too sure if they'll be able to pull it off. Or they'll do two hard tires and the last stint of the race might be on mediums. It'd be interesting to see their tactic, but we have no idea on what tyres they are choosing or have chosen previously, which I do think is um, a shame and it needs to be implemented in Forza. If you agree with that, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments below if there's anything else I'm missing that should really be implemented on the HUD at the top left to indicate strategies and things like that. Uh, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head right now is tyre uh, choices uh, fueling might actually be helpful but fueling in a race we just fuel up the car what it needs to get around the whole track and go from there really it's, there's not much of a strategy implemented yet into Forza we are doing very well on our lap times we're setting now a 30.287 second lap and this lap's also going to be quicker than that one so I'm going to be interested as we cross over the finish line what lap time we're going to be setting. We are setting a 30.213. That's incredible. I mean the Aston Martin in the first race was only setting a 32.6 seconds. And I could only get that car even with all the tuning I did. I spent about an hour or two tuning that car and just lapping it around here trying to improve it. I could only get it down to a 31.6 if I remember correctly on hard tyres. So having this car being a second and a half quicker than that is insane. I will leave a copy of my tune in the Discord. The link is at the bottom of the description. Coming out of the pits for our final time. We are in position three and it looks like Devon is catching up to us right now. And you can see they are sketching around a little bit as so is the lexus behind so i'm gonna let devon pass let the lexus pass and hopefully they can drag me along with him bit of con Ooh, nope there wasn't contact it was latency okay it sounds like they're whacking each other about when they're not so i'm not too sure what's that about 
go and tuck up the inside, try and keep away from them and gain that, well, two positions from them. Devon has gone off and Ross1617 is taking the high line. Right, well they're going to have a better run than I am, so I'm going to tuck in behind, look at that, 186, 187. Come into this banking now. This car does do great when it's following someone, but when someone's behind you, the back end becomes really funky. So the error wash in this game hasn't really been done that well. I find it a bit funky. So you're coming around here now, you can see the grip. I'm doing 176 and it's staying proper planted. But earlier on when I had someone behind me, I couldn't get it past 170 without the back end just sketching out everywhere. So um, if you are in this car, tuck behind someone that's in front of you. Don't let anybody be behind you and hold on for dear life because this car really does fly. Absolutely insane. 180 miles per hour setting a better lap time of 29.775 guys on hard tyres that's insane I'm well over the moon with this tune and this car is doing me proud cannot complain about that only thing I've got complaint about is the poor network and the previous two races where they were very chaotic Lee Loves You has quit the race they was the one that had quite a large penalty so I wonder what's happened there, whether they've had a contact with somebody else or gone off track or just given up. Not too sure. Lazy Old Woman is 1.5 seconds ahead of us. We do have nine more laps to go as we're coming around here. So we might be able to pull that back. Ross goes and clips the wall and then quits the race as well. I'm not too sure why they quit the race. Uh, it's a shame because we was having a great, great battle and to be fair, they was dragging me along a little bit. So we was actually gaining time from lazy old woman up in front and not losing it. Skylinks is 10 point whatever seconds away. I'm not too sure if we have to catch that back up, but they've only pitted once, which might mean at a latter real last few laps, they might be at such a disadvantage. We'll be able to reel them back in quite quickly. That's what I'm hoping for, whether it'll happen or not, who knows? Let me know down in the comments below if you think it will happen, because I really do hope so. I mean, I'm really happy where we are now. We're on podium, guys. I mean, the first two races were absolute hell compared to this, and we're on podium now. It's been such a clean race. Yes, it's been a bit funky because of the network issues. It's been a bit chaotic in places, but it's been an absolute blast, and my arms are absolutely aching. From just the minute touches and holding onto that wheel as tight as I can and you really are gripping the wheel because you've got such little adjustment and trying to keep this car in the direction you wanted to and not let that back end step out it's it is quite really you've got to be so precise you know it's not like a, um, a normal race where you go left right you have a bit of flexibility in you I'm just going left a little bit left a little bit left a bit and holding that wheel tight so not let it have any flex in it or anything to just upset this car so although it's the craziest race ever it's one of the most enjoyable i've had up to now i mean because it's different you know and you have to think a bit more outside the box whether it be tire strategy whether it be how you've tuned the car the car choices i do think this is a very strong car for this kind of race so the tune setup has also complemented this car Oh, we are actually gaining quite a bit of time from position one. Seven seconds away now. So, yeah, we might actually reel them in. 1.8 seconds away from Lazy Old Woman, though. Uh, we are losing time from there. I don't think we are as quick at, as we was earlier. See now, we're slightly off our pace. Well, off our best lap. I mean, this we're within a very good time scale. I mean, best lap is now a 29.725. That's insane time. It's brilliant. Right. And thankfully, actually, all the back markers get ghosted. That is a huge plus because it would be an absolute chaos trying to overtake all the back markers whilst trying to keep your lap time and keep your position and everything as well like that. So that's good news. Is that another back marker there? Yeah, it looks like it. They're going to ghost out, hopefully. Yeah. I'm not 100% trustworthy on the uh, Forza Ghost system, as you can clearly tell. Anyway, coming around here now, lap 55, going to be starting lap 56 very soon. Tires have held on very well. I did extend, again, the second pit stop, so I have a 
much better run in the latter half of this race and that was my intention that these tires would be in far better condition and I could have that last little push if you understand what I mean four seconds away from Skylinks two laps to go oh my gosh this is going to be close come on guys let me know down in the comments below do you reckon it's going to happen you got to let me know down there it's getting so close if you haven't hit that like button that like button is going to help out as well ah three seconds away we have lost time again from lazy old woman 2.3 seconds away oh dear they're going to have that position because skylinks has a penalty they've overtaken them we have one and a half laps to go 2.3 seconds away oh my gosh this is going to be intense 1.7 seconds away going a little bit high in the banking losing a little bit of speed come on car you can do it 1.4 one lap to go coming around here 185 miles per hour hitting the banking at 180 175 we lost a little bit of speed but coming out the other side half a lap to go can i make this move work coming on the left they are in the current nsx and we have that position absolutely brilliant oh my gosh we're in position two that is just amazing and if you enjoyed what you're watching here take a look at this next video where we did the multi-class endurance race thank you all for watching see you all next time goodbye